and it's a fine skill of you know stick and rudder skills but kind of on an extra level hey what's going on mile high firebird fans welcome to this video uh if we're just meeting my name is seth and this channel is Mile High Firebird. We talk about cool pilot jobs. We talk about ways to build time as a pilot. And I like to show you what it looks like from the air at a thousand feet. So, what are we talking about today? Well, um, you like my shirt? Still playing with airplanes. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, so we're gonna do a quick Q&A video today. Uh, just to answer some of you guys' questions that I've seen through different posts and on YouTube. But before we get into the Q&A, I uh, just wanted to say thank you guys for being here. 500 subscribers. Can you guys believe it? I mean, I'm blown away. It hasn't even been a year yet, and we're already hitting 500 subscribers. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for dedicating uh, to the channel. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty awesome. Seen a lot of growth lately. Uh, one of my videos, the uh, 10 Tailwheel Tips video, which if you haven't seen yet, go check it out, has almost 9,000 views can't wait for it to hit 10. I know that video has brought a lot of you guys to the channel and uh, welcome. Hey, thanks for coming on. Thanks for being a part of the journey and thanks for being a part of Firebird Nation. All right, so let's get into a couple of questions here. Okay, so here's a question I get asked a lot. Why is the instrument panel blurred? Well, in all the videos that I put out, um, I have to blur anything that identifies the airplane with the company that I've been flying for. Uh, towing banners. So that's just company policy. That's just something I have to do. Don't like it, but you know, um, I want to respect the company. And so I, you know, usually typically will blur out anything that will identify the company or identify a customer on a banner or identify the airplane. Okay, so here's an interesting question. Um, I noticed your release mechanism is not affixated to the tailwheel bracket. I've never seen a release extending from the side or the rear of the fuselage. I'm a CFWI tow pilot in New Jersey. Could you elaborate on the advantages of this configuration? Honestly, all it is is a, it's just an extra release. Just the way the airplane's configured, you just have a an, kind of an external release. And that's basically for the ability to see the release uh, for the banner. So, you know, the you know, when you're looking outside the window and you look back, it's really hard to see where the uh, banner is attached to the airplane. Not to mention when you're flying banners, you gotta hold a lot of right rudder uh, and that just kind of helps offset it. So there you go. Okay, so here's a great question that I get asked a lot. How many hours do you get per year? And how often would uh, I be home with my family? So as a banner pilot, there's two seasons. There's off season and on season. Typically the on seasons from Memorial Day, 4th of July through Labor Day. So basically the summer. And depending on where you live, you could spend a lot of time away from home, but then you're home all winter. Um, also depends on if you're a full-time or part-time pilot. I highly recommend flying as absolute much as you can, build as many hours as you can, and you will see and get to do some awesome things. I spent the entire summer in New York and New Jersey and it was great. Great place. Loved seeing Long Island. Loved seeing um, New York, which those videos are still coming. I'm sorry you guys, it's been absolutely crazy. Uh, right now I'm in the middle of training for a new job, flying cargo. So there's a lot that I have to go through. And that's kind of why my schedule, my upload schedule has been a little bit uh, random. So. I'm gonna continue with the videos. It's just gonna take a little bit once I get through training. All right, so another great question here. How quickly would I be able to go from zero hours to qualified to tow banners if I took less than three to four times a week? Is it a 250 hour job? Well, there is no hour requirement, at least with our company. Um, you can, if you want to, you can fly as much as you want. You know, it depends on the weather, depends on the schedule, but uh, you can build hours pretty quickly. Not to mention, it'll take about a week to two weeks to get yourself spooled up to where you can uh, be able to be soloed and flying banners by yourself. So not much time at all. You just gotta spend the time to actually get the training done and then the hours are just gonna build after that. All right, got another great question here. 
Why do you need a tailwheel endorsement? Can you not tow in a tri-gear such as a tri-pacer or a Cessna 172? Well, honestly, you don't need a tailwheel, but most companies that fly banners uh, will fly tailwheel aircrafts. They'll fly bird dogs or they'll fly pawnies or they'll fly, you know, super cups like we do. So, you know, it's good to have your tailwheel. Plus, trust me, it is the best endorsement you can get. It is so much fun. It's you in the airplane and it is just great. I've actually seen plenty of companies that tow with 172s. Uh, they'll tow with, you know, uh, tri-pacers, whatever it is. But honestly, most companies will tow with tailwheel aircraft. So that's why I highly recommend getting your tailwheel endorsement. All right, got another great question here about how much money did it take for you to go from zero to 250 hours? Honestly, it varies on the school and it varies on whether you go part 61 or you go part 141. Part 61 is usually a business, small business, a flight school. And so part 61, they're going to charge their own fees and rates, you know, depending on where you live and stuff. But then on the part 141 side, you'll be going through an accredited program where you should be able to apply for grants and all those things if you want to. It's more like a college degree. So it really depends on what direction that you go. And if you decide to go in the direction of the part 141, like I did, you might be able to get funding. I was able to get funding through uh, the VA being a veteran. So if you are a veteran, 100% recommend you use the GI Bill to get yourself through private instrument and commercial but you can only do it if you get your instrument and your commercial they won't just pay for your private you should definitely look into it if you're a veteran use the GI Bill and get your pilot's license okay so this is a uh, long question but basically he's asking you know how's Florida what's it like I'll tell you what I'm from Colorado born and raised in Colorado decided to move to Florida and I gotta tell you what Florida is awesome I really really enjoyed spending the time that I did in Florida South Florida Miami what a cool place especially from the sky I gotta tell you the just the things that you get to see which I will have a Miami video coming soon he also asked how did you manage your flight training and your family life well it's not easy um, honestly being a pilot is something that is very challenging if you're married if you have kids I'm able to do it because uh, the person that I'm married to is absolutely awesome. She is a very forgiving and very understanding woman and I love her to death. And so yeah, it takes time away from my family, but honestly, you got to come up with compromises that you're willing to accept, willing to swallow, and um, if you are able to get through that, the future for you is really bright. So. Yeah, if you're single though, man, I tell you what, get your pilot's license, get your career, and then get married. And I appreciate this part. You just seem like an awesome person and pilot. Kind of feel like I'm just watching a friend when I watch your videos. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say. I really appreciate that. Uh, he said, I'm still a low-hour student, but uh, I'm obsessed and extremely enthusiastic about flying. Me too. I love the community aspect of general aviation. Keep up the great work. Absolutely. That's why I'm here. I'm doing this because the FAA has put out a 1500 hour rule and it is daunting. Come on, man. 1500 hours is like, I don't know, somebody check my math, but it's like eight hours a day for eight months straight. It's a lot of flying, a lot of time in the air and a lot of money. So if you can build your hours and get paid to do it, man, there's no better way to get to the spot that you need to be to move on if you want to go in the airlines, if you want to fly cargo, if you want to go into corporate, whatever it is that you want to do, you got to build time, you got to build hours. And that's why I started this channel because it's it's tough. It, it there's It's an issue and we need ways to solve it. And so I'm trying to work on getting information out to you guys who are just starting out and who are like, uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I really need to build time, but nobody's going to give me the experience, and I have no experience. So, how am I supposed to build time if nobody will hire me because I have no experience, but I need somebody to hire me so I can get experience? It's this weird dilemma. And so, banner towing and even flying cargo, you can start as a low time pilot. And yeah, it's a, let's be honest, it is a steep learning curve, but you know what? It's worth it. 
and you can get in the system and you can get going and you can build time and you get paid to do it. That's the best part is that you get paid as a commercial pilot to build time, to move yourself up, and you don't have to just spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on building time in some Cessna 150 that you buy off of Craigslist. <laughs> so anyways, that's why I started the channel. I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for comments like that. That was really, really nice. I really appreciate that. I'm just going to keep doing it. And, you know, as new things come along, I'm going to continue to show you guys and tell you guys and talk with you guys. Look, we're a community. Let's work together. Let's network. Let's help each other get past this hurdle of the 1500 hour rule and let's get flying and let's make money doing it. So I did a video asking my subscribers, you guys, what would you like to see on this channel? And one person replied, I'd like to see what makes banner towing unique in aviation. How does it work? What kinds of places do you get to see and travel? Honestly, this is one of the most unique jobs ever, not just in aviation. It is fantastic. I mean, it's awesome. You get to take this machine, this almost a toy, this awesome super cub, and you pick up a banner with it, fly around, show people on the ground, you're selling beer or you're selling insurance or whatever, flying over and around football stadiums and the entire time you're building time you're getting paid to do it you're in a airplane that was built in 1946 you're just in this spot of aviation that is not only uh iconic and not only just i, I don't want to say archaic because it really is it really is just as much alive as it's ever been but you're just in this spot where you can do one of the coolest jobs in aviation and you're doing it by yourself you're flying you're seeing all these cool places and you're getting paid to do it and you're building memories and you're building hours just this year I went to Florida and this is for banner towing I went to Florida I went to Alabama for Talladega I went up to New York and New Jersey and I ferried the airplane up there it was like three day trip by myself in an airplane just going in and out of airspace uh, avoiding restricted airspace <laughs> flew around New Jersey for the summer flew in uh, New York as well then I took a trip out to California went to uh, Arizona those are videos are coming on the channel too I know I keep saying that I gotta get to them editing's a long process trust me I'm just telling you this job is so cool if you can get the chance to tow banners you absolutely should take it it will put experience under your belt and hours in your logbook that you will cherish forever. I'm not even kidding. And I'm always gonna say that banner towing is one of the coolest jobs in aviation. And I'm serious. You get to experience flying the way I would say is the way it was originally understood. Just you and the airplane and doing pilotage and dead reckoning and all that cool stuff. Looking outside, figuring out where you're going, avoiding weather, you know, all those things. It's just, it's raw aviation. It's just one of the coolest things that you'll ever do and you absolutely should try it. Okay, here's a question I get a lot. I uh, just finished my commercial training, would love to banner tow for a while on building hours. Great, I like where you're headed already. Do you have any recommendations for banner companies to apply for? Yes, I do, 100%. However, I can't publicly tell you who I work for and I can't publicly recommend who I work for and who I think you should work for however if you're interested right there that's my email so it's uh, if you guys got business inquiries or you guys want to know more information about banner towing right there email me and ask me questions I'll give you the contact information for our hiring team tell you anything you need to know and uh, if you're interested in towing for us, we are hiring. Right now is the training season, so you should absolutely send me an email and I'll get you over to our hiring team. Get, have your resume ready. Um, you know, Make sure you have your tailwheel endorsement and make sure you're eligible to work in the United States. If you have those things, write a nice cover letter and, uh, and get ready because uh, you're gonna get a phone call that you are not gonna regret and it's gonna be one of the best phone calls you'll ever receive because it was for me. 
All right, another question. Tough headwinds that day. It's actually a pretty interesting video. You should check this one out. Here it is in the card. How much does a typical banner weigh and how many knots does it take off on a calm day? Typically banners weigh around 50 pounds um, and you know sometimes less depending on the size, depending on you know what the message is, if it's black ink, if it's white ink, you know whatever. But um, you know typically you can come down to about 35 knots indicated when you are towing and it really depends on the wind. In this video, this one that you know just popped up there, I was going less than zero knots. I was actually going backwards. I'm not kidding. The wind was so strong and I had a pretty heavy banner that I was, well, this is a 172, but we'll just use it for an example. I was flying and I hit a point with a high angle attack, uh, you know, just below a stall where I was actually moving backwards <laughs> and people on the ground are probably like, what in the heck is going on with that airplane? But it was all just about, you know, holding that angle of attack with the relative wind. And, you know, the wind was just a little bit stronger than, you know, what I had my power settings at. But it was totally safe, 100%. But it was really, really fun. You know, living our lives on the edge of a stall, that's banner towing. Alright, here's another good one. Uh, I would love to see more of the technical part of banner flying and how you plan. What does it feel like on the controls? to tow and uh, do you fly the plane differently when towing as compared to without yeah the technical stuff uh, when you're flying you learn that in training but you basically learn to fly the banner um, it's and sometimes the banners kind of flying you or as we would say the tail is wagging the dog but you basically are you know you're just you're just feeling the airplane you're feeling the banner especially when you're in a turn you can really feel the effect of the banner, especially when there's like, you know, certain crosswinds, you can feel it pull and you just listen to it. And it's a fine skill of, you know, stick and rudder skills, but kind of on an extra level, kind of on a mega level of feeling the banner that is, you know, hundred something feet behind you. And you're just kind of feeling how it works as you fly. And, you know, of course, once you release that banner, your stability changes and if you're um, not ready for it it'll it'll wake you up but fairing these cubs as compared to actually towing with a banner two totally different worlds your angle of attack is different your speeds uh, you know how close you live on the edge of a stall all those things they're all safe 100% you know we're taught training how to do that but it is a totally different animal from flying the plane and towing a banner. Okay, last one is actually a comment, not a question. I wish you all the best. And personally, I appreciate your honest update of reality in the world of reaching dreams. Every journey begins with a step. Absolutely, 100%. Thank you for the comment. And I really appreciate having you know you guys recognize that. I really want you guys to come along the journey with me. Uh, you know, being a pilot is a great thing. It's a great job. And it's really this, how far you want to go and how hard you want to work to get your dreams into reality. Because honestly, if you have a dream without some kind of plan, it's nothing but a wish. And a wish isn't going to get you anything or anywhere. You got to get up, you got to work hard, you got to study. You've got to put the work in and every single ounce of studying that you do, every single hour that you fly will pay dividends on the other side. I 100% live by that strategy because if you work hard and you dedicate yourself and you have perseverance and you go after what you want, you will get it. You just have to work hard. Uh, you really, really, really need to remember the work hard part because if you don't, you're going to get disappointed. You're going to compare yourself to somebody else's journey and you're going to deflate almost instantly. Don't do that. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. You don't know their journey. You don't know how hard they worked. You don't know what sacrifices and compromises they had to make because you don't see that. You just see that they're successful. But let me just promise you that if you work hard, yeah, you're going to have some bumps. You're going to have a lot of trials and you're going to have a lot of times when you want to quit. I know. I've been there. I wanted to quit a couple of times and um, I didn't. It was tough. It was really, really tough, but 
I just worked my way through it. And it's kind of hard as a pilot, especially when you're by yourself. It's really tough to stay motivated, but you can do it. I believe in you and I promise you that you can do it. So yeah, um, go out and get your dreams. Go out and figure out what you want and go do it. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't because you can't. You just have to work hard. If you don't work hard, nothing's going to come to you. Nobody's going to knock on your door and say, hey, here's a free airplane. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's just not. So dedicate yourself. Work hard and enjoy the journey big time. Enjoy the journey because you'll build memories that will stay with you for the rest of your life. I've already got some amazing memories that I'll never forget and that um, you know I'm sharing with you guys. That's what my videos are. They're basically sharing the memories. So keep working hard. Thank you guys for being here. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Send uh, you know a video, share it, hit the little share button. Somebody who might be interested in tailwheel training or what it's like to fly in the Florida Keys or they need a new aviation radio or they just want to learn about you know what banner towing is whatever it is share the videos you guys uh, with people who are important to you and thank you guys for being here so we will see you for the next one hopefully you're gonna have the last video for the Colorado trip coming up soon as soon as I get through this training phase it's crazy thousands of pieces of information to memorize it's gonna take me a bit so but I'll get those to you guys soon and uh, we'll just keep going with the video. So again, thank you guys for being here. You guys are awesome and I appreciate you very, very, very much. And thanks for the 500 subscribers. See you guys soon.